All right. Welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today is a special behind the scenes, what it looks like on the other side of the camera here in a typical YouTube studio. So this is all the tools and stuff I use. And maybe we'll give you a little sneak peek on some of the DigiPi development here a little later. Let's talk about it this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back. If we're still getting the bump away with the bumper music, you know, and that's fact, that's one of the things that we can actually uh, talk about here is how do we do guitar stuff on YouTube? Yeah, I've got a little for you guitar heads out there. This is my amplifier. It's really simple. It's a simulator or amp modeler. So that was a uh, Marshall uh, 1959. A simulated guitar amplifier um, with speaker emulation. Got a real simple mixer board here, just a couple of channels like for the mic. And, and of course, right now I'm using my headset so I can look at you. I don't have to talk into the mic. Um, actually got a new monitor here. I was pretty happy with this guy here. Um, this is my Linux workstation. I do Linux every day, all the time. In fact, that's my day job. Um, I don't know, I probably haven't introduced myself to a lot of you. So, hey, my name is Craig. My day job is working on Linux enablement uh, for a large uh, computer company. In fact, I've been doing it for about 30 years. Uh, so working on Linux on Raspberry Pis is actually kind of pleasant because they're so simple, so easy to operate. So, so Linux doesn't have to be hard. Um, so this is a Linux workstation. Um, my Linux distribution is Ubuntu. Actually, it's KDE Neon, which is based on Ubuntu. So I use a KDE desktop. Um, a lot of the standard YouTuber tools like OBS um, for video edit, for video capturing, I guess. And then I've got uh, GIMP, I don't know, a new image manipulation program, like for doing thumbnails and things like that. So again, all Linux all the time. Now I do have a Mac here um, for testing out Mac stuff. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I really don't. I wish I did. This is a Mac M4 Mini. I use this now and then. I have recorded a video on this before. Um, it runs OBS and it runs all my favorite Linux apps because Macintosh, well, let's face it, they're kind of like Unix under the hood. Um, then I also have an HDMI display here to display the output of DigiPi which is doing an APRS packet duty right now. It's an APRS TNC. Um, HDMI isn't working yet on the production version of DigiPi, so we're doing a lot of development there. Uh, HDMI output is kind of one of the, the the new cool things that we're doing here. So Linux workstation all the time for work, for play, uh, for all of our development. Um, this is kind of how it works here. So, you know, a lot of people, when they get into YouTube, they have no idea what they're doing, myself included, right? So you're just kind of winging it and putting stuff together. So I'm interested in your opinion, especially if you're a YouTuber. You know, what tools are you using? What are you doing to make things easier? What's your uh, audio capture settings? You know, like, you know, just trying to figure out frames per second, right? So I'm at 48 frames per second and my PC fans are going nuts. You know, I couldn't really get 60 frames per seconds going in OBS. So maybe you guys have some OBS tricks for me. Or how do you guys, you know, this is like the worst part of it, how to, to generate the thumbnails. And honestly, I hate to say it, the thumbnail is probably the most important thing on a YouTube video. So, you know, I have these, uh, the, the GIMP GNU image, uh, GNU image, what do you call this? GIMP, we call it GIMP. So this is how I draw my thumbnails. You know, I'll do some screen captures. I'll do the, uh, you know, the title and that kind of stuff, doing the thumbnails for the videos. And uh, we mentioned OBS. I've got some, some other webcams. I don't know if I'm sold on what I have for webcams. Right now, you are looking at me through a Razer, a Kayo something. I don't know. Um, it seems reasonable. I could get 60 frames per second out of it, which was cool. And then I've got an old, basically, and high definition webcam here. Um, as far as the rest of the office is concerned, this is also my shack. So we've got the ICOM uh, 7300 here. I don't know if turn this guy on. I don't know if you guys can see it. 7300 hanging out here. I can do voice modes on this. Um, in the back, I've got a uh, dipole antenna. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. So uh, it's a fan dipole, actually. So we've got 20, uh, we've got 40, and 30. We've actually got wires for that. And then um, actually the 30 has some has some coils on the end of it and some pigtails. So I can actually get portions of 75 meters on that. So I can operate all of those modes and their harmonics. Uh, the, uh, the only modes I can't get here is usually like, uh, I don't know, I can't really get 60 meters um, I can pretty much get everything else, a very small portion of 75. So yeah, I always keep my, my band plan here. If you don't have a band plan, print out a band plan because 
I always forget, you know, I end up transmitting voice in the digital portion or something like that. So that's the band plan. Hey, we do a lot of Raspberry Pi work. So I've got all of my Raspberry Pi stuff here in a cigar box. This works out. So, you know, all these, these DigiPies, here's our DigiPie rack, right? <laughs> it's fitting in here kind of. I Actually, I'm probably going to need more cigar boxes. I usually keep an HT around just so I can monitor what I'm transmitting. Honestly, this is my favorite HT. Um, they didn't even make it anymore. So if you get it on eBay, get it. The FT one XDR. I don't like the newer ones. Um, I actually did a, a test with the FT3DR and the FT1DR, and I just had them listen to APRS packets full time, right? Um, this was actually decoding more packets than Yesu's flagship HT. So um, I don't know. Maybe I'll try the test again. Maybe they've got a, a more sensitive uh, APRS receiver, but I, I actually think they're doing it with the short duty cycles on the receiver and they're clipping packets. Anyways, that's that's a Yesu rant there. Um, I think I talked about the mixer. This is an Alesis Multimix something USB FX, so it has phantom power. Initially, I wanted to put like a condenser mic, which I actually have, um, but you can hear someone talking quietly at the other end of the house with those uh, condenser mics. So I generally like to use this plain old Shure mic. Um, this is a kind of an industry standard for live vocals, and it's good enough. This speaker mic that I'm using right here, Jabra, this isn't this isn't very good quality. If I was to use this mic, it would sound much better. Um, so we talked about that. We've got the ICOM 705 over here. That's where this guy hangs out. He is hooked into uh, my, uh, uh, H, uh, my VHF antenna on the roof. That's a Diamond X200. Things like six or seven feet tall, sticking out of the roof. I don't really have a mast on it, but it's kind of bolted to uh, like the, the weather head for my cable entrance. So it's actually right up there. And then uh, I've got a whole bunch of VHF radios and a big uh, Alpha Delta switch. Yeah, Alpha Delta switch. And it switches uh, between four different radios um, that, that can so that we I can share that uh, antenna on the roof. And then, of course, I've got a VHF HF switch here by MFJ. You guys can't see it. It's just a two position switch that lets me switch between HF and VHF on my ICOM 705. And of course, you know, I always tell people use a Raspberry Pi Zero. Well, it's inside here. I got a Raspberry Pi Zero here somewhere. Use a Raspberry Pi Zero for your DigiPi, for your amateur radio data transceiver. This is honestly the lowest power. It's the easiest. It's the most simple. Um, you can take this on the summits. Um, but I do do all of my development on a Raspberry Pi 5, um, mostly because I'm actually compiling software on there. You need a lot of memory and plenty of CPU power. So I do have a Raspberry Pi 5 here for my development. But I'll be honest, the next thing I test on is this. And then, of course, you know I'll test on the 3, the 4, um, the other Raspberry Pis as well. So this is my development workstation. Of course, I've got guitars all over the place, a bunch of uh, nice tailors and uh, Martin and the guitar probably my favorite guitar <laughs> people ask me this all the time is a Canadian made Godin LGX guitar this is from the 90s I don't know if they make them exactly like this anymore but uh, this is definitely my favorite guitar and I've got them all I've got all the big American brands and stuff but this one's probably the most versatile especially for YouTube stuff. Now, it's not going to replace a Les Paul, but man, it's a pretty cool guitar overall. Uh, so we talked about this over in the corner here. I don't actually have a Gadsden flag. I know <laughs> I don't know if it's politically charged or not. We got Beavis behind me over there on the yellow flag. He's he's got a thing that says, "Are you threatening me?" So yeah, every now and then I'll I'll bust out. I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but one of my intro bars was the beginning to Beavis and Butthead. I guess. I guess that's just a guilty pleasure. I, I like everything Mike Judge does. If you want to watch a Mike Judge, if you want to see something funny, watch anything that Mike Judge does. So, oh yeah, and last and certainly not least is our arcade cabinet right here. A lot of people are asking about this. In fact, I did a whole video on it. So this arcade cabinet, we go back a long way. So this cabinet will get you through any meeting, any boring meeting at work where you're doing teleconferencing, so long as you're not on video camera and the, the, Controls are a little noisy, but uh, the arcade cabinet will, will is really uh, will get you through the day. Let's just put it that way. So the, the people who make this is called Vilros or Vilros. Um, you can get the cabinet on Amazon. You add a Raspberry Pi and the software and all that. So this is pretty cool. The Vilros arcade cabinet gets me through the day. If, if you've got a day of this, oh, meeting. So if you're into retro arcade, it's pretty cool. This isn't done yet, okay, guys? So let me, let me show you what DigiPi is looking like right now. We're just about ready to make a test image. Um, I've really gone back to try and instead of just doing it right now, I'm really, we're, we're gonna try and do it right, uh, really professional uh, image. DigiPi, let's check this out.
Hey, all right, since we're doing behind the scenes, I'll give you another camera angle. Uh, this is what the other side of the room looks like. Hey, I've got uh, like a whole p a public address system over here. I got a keyboard and stuff. I got everything to keep me entertained here, um, including, including some old vinyl stuff here. In fact, there's some Radiohead. Hey, Jeff, that's for you. I know you're into Radiohead. I got OK Computer on there. So hey, I'll be listening to vinyl when we're rocking on this. So yeah, I promised we'd take a look at how Digipy works a little bit here. This is a development release. This is one9 dash. Three, so um, that we notice instead of a bunch of on off buttons that are all ugly, um, we've actually got real uh, HTML buttons so we can turn things off and on and on and off. We got a little status thing over there. I was gonna add some spinners and stuff. We've got a whole bunch of new cool stuff down at the bottom here. If you wanna see what the GPS is doing on your radio, this is hooked up to, uh, uh, actually this is the DigiPi over here connected to an ICOM 705 and it's actually reading its or it was reading its in, uh, GPS information so we got a GPS screen on here now um, so DigiPi if you don't know what that is let, let's face it it's welcome to the channel for one um, <laughs> keep looking at the camera that isn't there it's basically a Raspberry Pi that you hook up to your radio and then you can access every data mode there is using a web browser that could be on your phone or your tablet. And right here, we're just using our PC going at digipi.local. But there are all, and these are all the different services you can run on it. So right now it's an APRS mode. Um, you can actually see the screen. If you can't afford a one of these $12 monitors, don't get cheap on me, guys. This is one of these little monitors. This is what's displayed on that screen. So you can see all your APS, APRS stuff going on there. Let me... Uh, Close that out. What else have we got that's new? We got a um, system information page. We're still working on that. So you can actually see what radios are actually connected. So there's no guesswork. You can see if there's audio uh, interface going on, memory usage, you know, a bunch of diagnostic stuff that's secretly for me. That way I can ask you, hey, click on system information. Let's see what's connected to your Raspberry Pi. Of course, we've got some audio setups here now. Um, so we can change all of this stuff, even with our mouse. Who knew that this uh, also mixer actually worked with your mouse? So I can actually change audio levels with my uh, scroll wheel and whatnot so hey that's kind of cool it just makes it easier you know the, if you have to go to the command line on digipi i have failed you in some way so we've got some uh, this is a little more slick now like if you want to start ft8 you click on the slider here and then you go to ft8 it's not going to give you an error message or anything <laughs> it's really zoomed in um, so ft 8s working just great it clicks right through it starts a lot faster in fact, I can put it on a real, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to make a con, you know, I always, always try to make contacts when I'm on these, you know, because, hey, I want to operate radio. <laughs> I'm not really into making YouTube videos. I want to operate radio. So here is a FT8 jamming on 20 meters. Um, I would really like to get some of the auto scaling working. Um, right now, you kind of have to come over here if you want to scale it to your screen or crop it. Um, and that's cool. And I don't want to make any assumptions on you guys. And plus, I don't want to break what you guys already know. So yeah, I can, uh, I can zoom it back in. Yeah, so here's FTA. It's actually running on the DigiPi connected to the ICOM and displaying in my web browser. Um, this could be on my phone too. I could be in the, in the, in the living room uh, with the XYL, do, but doing radio operations. She wouldn't know. So I, I think that's all the new stuff I got. So I got, the, let's see, we got APRS web chat. I don't know if we got anything new going on there. Um, I'm really, oops, uh, audio didn't start because FT8 was running. I got to work on the sequencing a little bit. I'm trying to make this faster. So like um, if you start a TNC or iGate, um, it'll go ahead and shut down any other services that are using it. So yeah, that's probably a bug I need to work on to turn red there. So let me, uh, let me turn on the APRS web chat. Um, in the, the startup link down here, it'll actually wait for web chat to start before it takes you to a page, before it takes you, shows you it, and so you don't get like a 404 error or something like that. So all of that stuff's fixed. Um, so I don't know, I, I can send a, a beacon here on wide one. So the, the ICOM Sonify is sending a GPS beacon, uh, APS, super simple. So the, I think these are the new features here. Uh, one of the other cool things is Walt's been working on this. So if I want to see the location of somebody, I can actually click on update right here. I don't know if you guys can, can read this. And it'll actually go out uh, via APRS <laughs> and go to the repeat call sign and ask where my station is that I'm talking to right here in this chat. And it'll give me their direction and bearing. And of course, uh, if, if they have, if they beaconed recently, um, um, it'll just it'll go from unknown location to uh, where, how far away they are and what direction. <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks a lot, guys, for hanging out with me today. This is all this is all completely out of control. This is a lot of fun. I you know I always wanted to do a behind the scenes video. I'm always interested in other YouTube folks seeing what they're using. You know what kind of 
hardware they've got uh, just to make this easier and fun for every for everybody here. And of course, hooking up radios and getting all the audio right, that's always a trick too, right? So, hey guys, um, check out my other videos on DigiPi. Um, like and, and subscribe. You know, I've never actually said that because it always seems self-serving, but we're getting close to like a lot of subscribers. I don't know what that means or what's going to happen. I think we're, we're over, well over 8,000 now, so we're really moving along here. And, uh, you know, the more people who see these videos, the more people who are going to be on data or digital modes on their amateur radio. So uh, let's make this easy for everybody. Hey, my name is Craig, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I'm in uh, cool California and I'm clear.